In this video, we're going to explore the save to sew method for saving a design inside of the FTCU software. And in the previous video, we talked about the regular file save and file save as. This is a little bit more advanced, so let's take our, our time and explore it a little bit. So I have this design open on the on the computer here, and I'm going to go to File and then Save to Sew. Um, also, you do have the save to sew icon right here and you have a save to sew icon right here this shows up when nothing is selected in the design so but if i go either of these methods and click file save to sew it's going to open up the save to sew dialog box now this is a very um, powerful feature of the software and i will just say that it is designed to work best with designs that were created inside of the software. It didn't have to be created inside the software. It's just it's better that it, if it was created in the software. And the reason is because this really focuses on working with the outlines of a design. And they're much cleaner in a WAF file than a different machine format that you might bring in. So when you go in here, the first thing that you find is the fabric section. And this is where you can choose the type of fabric for your um, project. So you have a bunch of different options in here. If I was gonna go onto a knit t-shirt, there is two different options that you'll see here. I didn't digitize and I digitize. Now to explain this as briefly as possible, if you created the design yourself, choose the I digitized, meaning it was created in the software, you put the settings in, um, all of that. If you brought this design in, like you purchased a design, choose the I didn't digitize. And the reason for this is because it's all in how a design is created. If you create it in the software, it has outlines and it knows what the push, pull compensation, underlays, all of that, it understands what has taken place. If you bring in a design that was created in a different software program or just was in a different format, the software has to recreate all of those outlines and it, it just doesn't, it doesn't know what to do with it. It doesn't know how much compensation was added or not. And so there is a video on, on outlines and how they work and I highly recommend going and watching that video if you want a little bit more information it, it will kind of help explain why you would choose I digitized for a design you create and why you don't choose it for a design you don't create in the software so this one was created in the software so I'm going to choose I digitized okay and if I choose that the next thing is I can select to apply new settings to it. If I check this box right here, you'll see that it automatically checks that it will apply new density to the design, new underlay, new pull compensation, and other basic settings for a design. And these settings are all gonna be based off of the type of fabric that you choose. So in this case, a knit t-shirt, because it's not a very stable fabric, it's a knit, it's going to apply different settings for density, underlay, compensation, and um, other basic settings than it would if you chose denim, which is a woven fabric, because woven fabrics need different stitch settings applied to them. So it's all going to be based off of the type of fabric you choose, and you don't have to understand how to do all that if you use this tool. And you'll see that I can uncheck any of these. So I could uncheck, I don't want it to, you know, add new compensation if I wanted to, if I understood what was going on, I might not want to do that. Convert to outlines. This is if the design hadn't been converted before, you can choose to convert to outline. There is an advanced tab here. So this convert to outlines means when you bring a design in that wasn't digitized in the software, you have to create outlines. Um, in order for the software to know what to do with it. So this is where you would select that if it was like a PES design or any other stitch format design, you would need to make sure it was converted to outlines so that it can apply new settings. Advanced is um, a very uh, 
It's not something that's used often by many people. It is a powerful tool. Um, I don't know of other software programs that have this. This is something that's very unique. And what this will do is if it was a design that was created um, for in a PES format, for example, stitch format, it will, when it's converting it to outlines, it has the ability to go in and try to find all of the artwork um, or, or all of the underlay in a design, sorry. And you can do it simple or aggressive. And by choosing aggressive, it's really going to analyze the design and it's going to try to find anything that was underlay and remove it out of the design. And the reason you'd want to do that is because a file like a PES design, it no longer, like underlays, are no longer attached to a fill or satin. So what it's going to do is it's going to try to remove the previous and then add new if you have this selected. It's kind of a advanced feature. It may or may not make sense to you right now. There is, again, um, a video on opening designs and what it means to convert it to outlines or not. And I highly recommend you watching that video because it'll make a little bit more sense about how things get detached to a, a, to a design when it's in a different format. So this, I'm not going to convert it to outlines because I already have it in outlines because it was created in the software. I'm going to hit next. The next thing it's going to do is, oh, I, oh, give it a second here. Sorry. I clicked the button a couple times and I shouldn't have. Um, so it opened up here and it says save to sew print. So now what it's going to do is based off of it being a knit t-shirt and I said that I digitize it. You can see that right here. Now it's going to tell me what I should use to stabilize it. So step one is to fuse the cutaway medium fusible mesh to the back of the fabric because you want to use cutaway with knits and to get the best results you want it to be a fusible cutaway. Step two is hooping it. Step three is putting some heat and gone topper on top of um, the fabric so that the stitches won't fall into the fabric. So the really nice thing about the save to sew is not only are you going to save, you know, choose what type of fabric and all that, um, apply different settings, then it's going to tell you actually how to stabilize it, the best way to stabilize for that fabric. And you can see in the special instructions down here, it says if the design is large, overly dense, or poorly digitized, float one or two layers of Floriani medium tearaway under the hoop to support the excess stitches. So also, if you prefer, you can substitute Floriani water soluble topping for the Floriani heat and gone topping. The other nice thing about this is you can click right here. If you're not familiar with this product, you can click here and it will actually take you to watch a video on how to use it. Or you can click this link right here and it will take you to the product page to explain a little bit about what that product is. So that's kind of a nice feature as well. So now if I hit finish, it's going to bring me up to the save as dialog box. Okay, so now I can choose the name that I want to give it. So let's say I'm just going to choose flower three and I'm going to save it into the WAF format and hit save. One of the things that happened when I did this was this design notes right here got populated with the steps from the um, save to sew. So step one, fuse it, hoop it and put a topping in and then it has a special instruction. So, you know, that's nice to have right here, but at the same time that you've learned in a previous video on printing is that if I go to print preview, and if I have the setting for the design notes, so print design notes, I hit okay, you'll see that it will actually print that out for me. So I can actually have that as a guide if I want. Um, kind of a nice feature to have. And then we go ahead and close this. So now that's how you utilize the Floriani 
saved so again you can choose the icon or go to file save as and the big things are you're going to choose the fabric type and you can choose to apply new settings or not so if you're somebody who's not too sure about utilizing save to sew or changing any of the settings you can just keep this unchecked and if you keep these things unchecked um, I might have to click on one of them here. Let's see here. Let me click on. Oh, it's because I had this one selected. If I chose to do a cap this time, anything. Um, let me go back to that knit. I digitized. If I hit next, because I don't have anything checked here, it's just going to take me straight to the print or not the print, but the uh, stabilization. So you can use it as just a guide for stabilizing. You don't have to um, have it change anything if you don't want it to, any of the settings. It's just an option. Now I'm gonna click cancel here. And the other thing that I wanna show you about this design is that if I choose undo, it's gonna undo the save to sew settings here. And let me go, and you can see that I have 28,000 stitches. If I hit undo, um, it took out a few designs, uh, or a few stitches. If I hit redo, you can see that it changes as I click undo and redo here. And that's just showing you that it is doing something. The save to sew is making modifications. And so I highly recommend if you use this tool, especially if you're working with something like a, a stitch file like a PES or something like that that's not a WAF file, make sure you take a good look at the design and, and notice the changes that might have taken place because sometimes it'll make some changes to fill patterns and stuff like that that you might not want. And if you find that it's not giving you the results that you want, but you still want to get that stabilizer recommendation, just go up to the file save to sew and just keep these unchecked. But choose the fabric that you want um, or that you're going to use for the design. If you don't see a fabric, the fabric, particular fabric that you're using, just find something that's similar to it. These settings are, many of them share the same settings. They might just have, you know, it's just they have the names and it's something that kind of annoys me a little bit because I would rather it be a knit or a woven and have a lot fewer options here because sometimes people get stuck or fixated on finding that fabric that they're using. And the th important thing to keep in mind is that you want to, if you don't see the fabric, your particular fabric listed, choose one that's very similar to it because it will utilize the same settings okay and the same um, stabilizer recommendations so don't worry too much about it if you don't see your particular fabric here i just wanted to point that out and so once you do that you just keep these unchecked because if you don't want it to change any settings and then you just go to next and let it um, help you determine what stabilizer to use. So that's a great way to utilize Save to Sew if you don't want to make changes to the design or if changes aren't to your liking. And you'll see that I chose something different. So now I have different options here. It's kind of um, different, you know, stabilizer recommendations. So it's really very handy tool. And so that is Save to Sew using the Floriani FTCU software.